Bonjour. Ça va? Ça va? OK, c'est mieux. Mais malheureusement, mon parole va être en anglais parce que c'est mon langue naturelle. <laughs> OK, d'accord. So let's moi commencer. All right. Um, my name is Kenya Jordana James, and I currently serve as the Deputy Public Affairs Officer at our U.S. Embassy here in Conakry, Guinea. I would like to thank the organizers of Saden for this opportunity to speak before you today. I am grateful to join uh, my fellow presenters to touch on a few things that, you know, one is important to me, but might be important to you and important to the world. And that thing is woman empowerment. As a young child growing up in New York City and Atlanta, my mother followed in the footsteps of her mother and so on and so on. And she decided to instill in me many lessons as mothers do. And in particular, her lessons were influenced by our Jamaican heritage. One of the lessons um, that she decided to teach me that I think continues to reign true for my life is that the world is my classroom. There was nowhere in this world that you couldn't find us. And so therefore, I, you, belong in any space. Any space that you choose to enter, no matter what other people say, you belong there. The second lesson was that beauty and confidence doesn't derive from you know, the makeup you put on your face or anything, but from sources that are internal and within. Um, with those lessons, armed with them, and of course many more lessons that mothers tend to teach their daughters, I began to pursue my goals without regard for geography, without a regard for race or gender or any other boundaries that one may encounter. I was not alone, and everywhere you go, there are we, there are women, and we will always be there. So when I was 12 years old, I decided again to follow in my mother's footsteps, and I decided to become an entrepreneur. 12 years old, an entrepreneur, I was a little crazy, but nonetheless, I previously had dabbled in a catering business. At that time, I was baking cakes, and I used the profits from my first business to create a magazine. That magazine would then reflect not only my interests, but that of my peers, of a young African-American girl or a black girl. Now, starting a business tends to be very daunting for anyone at any age, especially a 12-year-old, but I took on that challenge during the, some of the most formative years of my adulthood or my life. I didn't think of the obstacles that I would encounter. Instead, I decided to plunge straight ahead. The magazine called Black Girl would go on to become a big success. It garnered many awards and even landed me an appearance on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Now, owning a magazine as Black Girl or owning a business was not a cakewalk, but as the saying goes, anything worth having is worth fighting for. Um, as a slightly well-known person, as I just mentioned, Oprah Winfrey, some of you may have heard about her once or twice. Um, she once said that challenges are gifts that force us to search for the new center of gravity. Don't fight them. Just find a new way to stand. And I hope that despite the challenges women may encounter, whether it be at home, school, work, or in their daily lives, that using their voice and supporting each other will no longer be minimized, but instead become the norm. So as a high school student, and even now, clearly, I enjoy being social and I enjoy conversing with others. Some, of people, some people would say, Kenya, you talk too much. Kenya, you're too loud. And although they are entitled to their opinions, I learned to ignore those voices. I knew that my voice would be the key to my success. And I think I was, a, I was right about that. Um, the summer before my junior or senior year of high school, I can't quite remember, I attended a program at Howard University. This program was recommended to me by my female computer science teacher. And I decided to participate in this program because I love politics, I loved the idea of spending a, a summer away from my mother. Don't tell her that. And it sounded really, really awesome. So I intentionally mentioned the gender of my teacher because I think it's important to highlight the value of inclusion and representation. So it is essential that when you are learning, you, the student, see yourself reflected in the classroom. 
The summer enrichment program that I attended at Howard piqued my interest in diplomacy, a career that would allow me to use my voice and my talents to represent my country abroad. This program gave me a sense of confidence that even though I was African American, young, a woman, I too could enter a career that was dominated by Caucasian men. Again, my mother's lesson of knowing that I belong in whatever place that I chose to enter came into my mind, and that's when I decided that I would become a U.S. diplomat. As a student at Howard University in Washington, D.C., you encounter a laundry list of challenges, living and working in a city environment. But most importantly, and more importantly, over time, you become equipped to deal with those challenges and how to face them. When you are a college student or a university student, you quickly become exposed to a litany of social expectations that are imposed on you simply because you're a woman. I rapidly learned that to navigate the intersectionality of my gender, my race, and my sexuality while also keeping up with the beauty and social norms, right? So fast forward a bit. After working in legislative politics, I became that diplomat that I thought about when I was in high school. And my first assignment was as a consular officer all the way in Ho Chi Minh City, of Vietnam. And currently, I'm happy and I'm pleased to be with you all here in Guinea as the cultural attache. Serving overseas has been the highlight of my professional career. Being a woman in any profession often involves navigating a labyrinth of being the right type of female colleague, wearing the right type of clothes, exhibiting the right level of emotion, not seeming too moody, not being angry, ensuring that you have the temperate tone. This labyrinth comes with a specialness when you're living overseas because you must walk a delicate balance between respecting local, local customs um, as well as abiding by your own cultural norms. When one reflects upon Guinean society, you may think of the food, the music, and other cultural elements. All besides those things, all of which I've definitely come to appreciate, I have realized another important element, Guinean women. In one of my first public engagements, I met with our exchange program alumni. And it was in that room that I met um, one of the key drivers of Guinea's growth and development, Guinean women. Now, as I am nearing the end of my assignment here in Conakry, I will leave in July, I can t testify very much so to the persistence of Guinean women when confronted with challenges, but also their resilience personified as they forge ahead to shape their future and the future of Guinea. It has been an honor to support Guinea's next generation of entrepreneurs and leaders through my work at the U.S. Embassy here in Conakry. Sometimes, I think back to how brazen the 12-year-old version of me was, and I think like, where is she? Is she still there? Have I been able to maintain my voice? Have I acted in ways that will allow for an easier path for the next young woman who will come after me? In navigating this world, it is important that we, as women, ask ourselves these hard questions while amplifying the voices of all women and their allies. The fact is, if one woman is silenced, in, all, in one way or another, we're all silenced. I would like to close with a quote from the famous American talk show host, Oprah Winfrey, when she once said, when you undervalue what you do, uh, the world will undervalue who you are. This is my reminder to you that never undervalue what you do or who you are because the world needs you. Thank you.